Must be a combination of both Ironets just being shitty. I think it is because it's just one of those ones. I mean, I guess one would affect the other, but technically, when I go to edit it, it's yours that's always off. But I think that's just because it's coming okay. in. <laughs> Cause Cause, mine, um, I think his mine's recording right here. Yours mm -hmm. is kind of coming in and then being recorded. Gotcha. Is that t shirt, is that like a. It's kind of hard to see. Is that a Marvel versus Capcom T-shirt, or is that just a bunch? Of, is that just an old school '90s Marvel shirt? No, this one's actually. This is what I thought was kind of cool about. It's not Marvel vs. Capcom, even though it does look like that because it looks like a player What's select T-shirt. Oh yeah, okay. I the see cool it thing now, about yeah. it though is you know, it's got Captain, it's got Iron Man, it's got Hulk, it's got Thor, the main ones, but it's got a bunch of characters that you normally don't get on a T-shirt who aren't allowed, like Hawkeye, um, Daredevil, Black Panther, and Falcon. Like, you can't come to the party, like, they're, like, Hawkeye and all them, no. Because, well, yeah, it's, like, um, I thought, literally, I thought you, was... you almost never see t-shirts with those guys on it. I Especially, I've never was... seen a Black Panther one, either. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, like, yeah, I thought it was Capcom. I, thought, was like, I thought Hawkeye was Strider for a second, and uh, Thor Hawkeye was some was like, miscellaneous... Of course, thought it was Strider. Nobody fucking wants to put Hawkeye on a t-shirt. <laughs> and I thought Thor was, like, some fucking Doc Darkstalkers character for a second. But no, I thought that was pretty... That was like the thing that kind of sold it on me. I was like, oh, it's got a bunch of characters you never get. That's a cool find. Well, now they are kind of going with more of the retro thing. You know, they are trying to be a little bit more of kind of like... Um, I mean, before, people kind of roll their eyes some of the 90s designs. But now, since it's almost kind of aimed at our generation, it's kind of like... It's like, remember this shit? You know, just like the really... like Even like some of the more outdated looks. But, you know, I think it's just there is that like nostalgia they're just kind of riding on. Well, it's not necessarily the retroness of it. It's just the fact that some of these characters no normally wouldn't get on a t-shirt. Like, when have you seen a Marvel t-shirt that's got two black guys on it? Since the Avengers. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, dude, come on. Since the Avengers came out. That's, that's the reason why. Now, I can't really... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm happy it's happening. But I can't... I, I can't really look at any of the, uh, the reason why Hawkeye's on there is because he was in the Avengers. The reason Falcon's on there is there he was in, <laughs> he's in the Winter movie. Soldier and he's gonna be in the next Captain America and most likely the next. And he Avengers was in uh, Ant Man. Yeah, he was in Ant Man too. So I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's happening, but I can't really look at anything. Like, all right, what's their what are, what's their angle? What are they planning here? You know, whenever I see something like that, like I just saw before we just started recording. We are recording. You are recording this by now, right? Yeah, by now. Okay, by the we should just get the get the intro out of the way real quick. So, hello, welcome to the Old Man Orange podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and I'm Ryan Dunnigan. Anyways, I was saying, I just saw um, just killing time. I kept on hearing about this Legends of Tomorrow show. Uh, that's Legends coming of Tomorrow. That's coming. I, I wish it had like a '90s kind of theme song like that. Like I said, I wanted Legends of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. With Hawkman, he's so cool. He's got wings and can fly. It's, in fact, he's actually... Well, no, he's not going to get high. He's a Republican. Why the fuck would he get high? He's, he's already giving me a dirty look and getting ready to smash my face in. Oh, fuck. Why am I singing anymore? That's the reason he never liked Green Arrow. Oh, oh I always like how those guys always fight. Like, you fucking Republican! And everybody else is like, oh, god damn it, they're going out again. And the next thing you know, they're like drinking beers and stuff. They're like, I fucking love you, you right-wing bastard. Yeah, you fucking commie faggot. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't that like... I thought they didn't get along, but I thought they really played. I thought it was Kevin Smith who really played the political card. Like, it was, okay, yeah, he just happens to be a little bit more liberal. He happens to be a little bit more, like, head-on into battle. And then Kevin Smith made it a Republican-Democrat thing and like, his Green Arrow run. Yeah, well, because well, the Green Arrow thing's been there since the, you know... Yeah, since the 60s. Six, the late 60s, but I, I guess... Was, I'm not really, like, the biggest Hawkman expert, but I think it's just because he's, he's from a world that's all about war and battle and so on, and I think that kind of puts him into that class easily. Makes sense why I like why I take out the Republican. Why not? Yeah, you know. <laughs> but they get along. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I saw the uh, I saw the trailer for Legends of Tomorrow, and even though I was like, okay, that's cool, but I I couldn't help but think, all right, they're trying to build people up for something. They're trying to build people up for like, well, there there already is the Flash movie they're gonna make. 
even though I think they should just use Flash from the show, but I think whatever. everybody thinks that except for the people that are making it and the guy who's playing Flash. Because the guy's like, well, you know, I get to be Flash, so I'm, I'm not complaining. Yeah, oh, yeah I mean, <laughs> well, I'll be honest. The guy who, I don't know who, I don't know the guy who's playing Flash in the movie, but the guy in the show, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I, the guy in the show is, is good, but I do imagine Flash being buffer. Just, I'm not trying to be a dick here. I do think Wait, that guy needs to hit the gym a little bit. But This sounds uh, weird. I actually never pictured Flash as a nerdy character. I picture oh, him he's, as a funny character, but not like a, kind of like, hey, 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 guys, I'm having a hard time getting Iris to like me, you know. <laughs> Green Arrow, can you give me some help? Yeah, don't be such a fucking faggot. <laughs> oh, I, I wish that was better advice than that. Like, because Barry, 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 Barry yeah. Allen's just like, he's just the kind of the funny guy who happens to be kind of cool. You know, that's how, at least in the comics and the shows, he's always kind of been portrayed. And don't get me wrong, like, I love the Flash show and all that stuff like that. But they do kind of, I think just to kind of counterbalance with uh, Green Arrow, they sort of do that instead. Because Green Arrow's like, you know, he's this cool billionaire guy who used to just drink and party all the time. But now he's fighting crime and taking things serious, you know. So it's like, okay, so what's Flash going to be? Well, he definitely was not the cool... He doesn't get laid. That's, that's, his, that's his thing. <laughs> Green, Green Arrow, like, fights and fucks. Well, Flash just can't get laid. Yeah, he's a fucking That's nurse. What it's all about. <laughs> and he wants to bang his sister. Well, they're not really sister, you know, brother related. But, you know, fuck, they've grown up in the same house for the last 15 plus years. So I'm it's kind of like this. It, it, it is one of those things where it's sort of like, I am kind of surprised they made him basically kind of like, um, uh, like surrogate brother and sister i mean because they're not related he they, he they knew each other before he lived with her but the idea of just kind of like yeah go ahead fuck my daughter it's all good you know i know i'm like a dad to you but hey man i've wanted you to fuck her since you moved in <laughs> you know? yeah. why do you think i adopted your skinny white ass joe is very chill about the whole thing so but i will say no that dude does a good flash and i, I really do like that show but i i thought i mean i think he, he plays a good barry allen because barry allen i mean I guess that's the thing. The way you the way you drew like a hero back then. Well, he's a hero, so of course he's buff. But he's not a um, fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, it makes sense in the context of the show because he's like a CI, he's a CSI, you know, in, a, a agent or whatever. And he's not really, but he's not really like a, he's not like an officer. He just kind of like does all the scientific investigation of it. So I think that's where it sort of fits in. And once again, I think it's the counterbalance Green Arrow more than anything else. Yeah, and the whole thing with that is like, well, to me, like. Barry was never really the funny guy. He was always like they made they made Wally the funny guy. Wally, well, yeah, was Wally's even funnier. Guy. It's like he had to top him. <laughs> well, Wally would come in and just be like Wally, just like he was the he was the stand up comedian. He'd come in and he wasn't a uh, he was he he wasn't a uh, cop. He actually was a mechanic for the uh, Central City Police. That's what he was a car mechanic for the police. Mm -hmm. And then so those people always kind of give him shit like oh you're not living up to Uncle Barry or whatever. But Barry was the uh Barry was much more like he was a boy scout but and he was but he was just almost like he'd be unintentionally funny like he'd be the guy who's kind of late to the party somehow and he just kind of embarrassed himself he was kind of like the fumbling guy that everybody liked but you know mm -hmm. that's usually you say something back but okay oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> okay i'm out that's all it was he's the fumbling funny guy he's, he's a funny bum bum bumbling funny guy yeah yeah no just but, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> just slipping on a banana feel like fucking Barry. <laughs> and then Batman's in the corner just laughing like, hey, fucking hate Fucking Barry. nerd. <laughs> Come on, shoot, man. Let's go beat up nerds. <laughs> remember the good old so days when we didn't allow nerds in this place? And Green Arrow's like, yeah, I remember those days. What the fuck happened? Yeah, more like a requirement is you had to bench lift at least 300 pounds. Yeah. At least. Yeah, 300 pounds as long as you weren't like a metahuman. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just not, not like, what if this, this fucking loser comes in, you know? But, uh, no, uh, the whole thing with, like, uh, with that, I mean, I think that ah, she, Bart was there real quick. He came in, he was Flash, he died, and Wally came back, like, oh, what the fuck, oh, he's dead now, whatever. Then Barry came back, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm behind the comics, I gotta catch up in the comics. But as I was saying about the, uh, about the whole, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, Legends of Tomorrow show, I finally, have you seen the trailer for it? Um, I want to say I saw like the first section of it, but it wasn't really like a trailer. It was like a teaser. Okay, I saw a trailer, and they got like White Canary, they got uh, the Atom, they got Firestorm, and they got Hawk Girl. Now here's I they the had one Hawkman in it too. 
Uh, maybe he comes in it. Probably will later. But right now, it's hot girl in the trailer at least. Okay. And uh, here's a uh, here's a uh, uh, one little thing that I'm just kind of like, oh, that's cool. They're in it. Like, wait, what? On the team, it's. I mean, if this happens once in a while in the comic, it's kind of cool. But I almost I like these guys as bad guys. They got Heat Wave and uh, Captain Cold, both as heroes on the that's team. That's kind of different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I was kind of like, no, no, no. Well, I what that. I, I, I'm kind of like, oh, man, that's going to take him away from the Flash. I want him to fight those guys. Well, this is – like, because they're kind of getting to the point where we literally are oversaturated with how many, like, superhero shows you can watch between Marvel, DC, and then other things that come out, too. It would be nice if that Legends Tomorrow did the thing where you could almost sum up a bunch of different superheroes all in one show instead of doing the thing of trying to give everybody their own individual show, which, you know, there comes a point you can only have so many. You know, I, I guess if you're like that – fat lady who needs the fucking six plus DVR system and doesn't get anything but a social security check every single fucking month, <laughs> then you could stay home and watch them all. But if you're not that person, why is it going to be a fat lady? Cause it's mostly always is. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you this. I've never I'm not really... being sizest. I'm just fucking saying <laughs> you very rarely ever see a guy who's like, no, no, no. I need the fucking six DVR plus thing so I can record everything and stay at home. It's always the like, no, it's my fucking wife that wants that. Be grateful. It's good. She's in a good place when she's in her room watching her 40-plus shows. <laughs> but it's it's like one of those ones, like, you got to sum up those shows at some point. That's why I always thought Justice League Unlimited was the best variation you could have of a superhero show. Because it gave you a little bit of every character. You had, like, uh, every it had like seven main characters from, like, the original. They would, like, they'd rotate in. Then you'd have, like, maybe... One or two characters that were always there in Justice League Unlimited. They rotate like uh, you know between Green, uh, Le- Green Air, uh, Green Arrow, and maybe someone else. And then they would have the guy they just had for the episode. That's what I like about it's like because then they could have a Hawk and Dove episode, and you go, "That was fucking awesome." But I don't want a fucking Hawk and Dove show. I'm just gonna say that, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, where sometimes I think it's sort of like in the movies too. I always still thought that was kind of unnecessary. I remember when they tried when they're building up to the Avengers. I was like, "Why don't you just fucking have a bunch of Avengers movies instead?" Like. I mean, yeah, you can work each character individually, but you could have had seven fucking Avengers movies by this point, too, and still got a lot more characters in. You know, just saying. Well, I will say that I'll, I'll say this, and don't tell I mean, don't get me wrong, I love watching superheroes beat the shit out of each other in villains, but um, the, the Avengers, even in the comics, it is basically just kind of like a big smash fest. It is just a lot of action. Well, you don't have to do that in the, the movie necessarily. You you can kind of have like an Avengers movie world. In this one, they're more like on an adventure, you know? And this one, they're well, doing there, that. And this there one, they're is, going against fucking Hydra. Yeah, well, there, there, I'd say there, there's so many characters in of those movies that you almost kind of have to already have an idea of who they are and all that, where I think Captain America, you get a bit lot better idea of who Captain America is. I mean, I think the Avengers movies still do a good job with all the characters individually, but I think that knowing everything that happened in the previous movies, that's where we kind of get to know them better. Because I've read the Avengers comics, at least new Avengers, and it's by Brian Michael Bendis, and he's a story-heavy guy. But when Brian Michael Bendis is writing the new Avengers, even though I like the characters and I like the series, it was very much just giving them excuse to go around the world and fight this guy and fight that guy. I know that's a big theme of comics, but I mean, it was more like, you know, it wasn't as, it wasn't as personal as it got when like he would write Spider-Man or just Luke Cage individually or something. The, 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 the there, there'd be occasional issue or two where it would just be focusing on one or two characters and then, Oh yeah, what's everybody else doing? But it was more of just kind of, you know, just a lot of action. But yeah. And the funny thing is, as, as I say that though, it's like, I'm actually not a big fan of kind of like justice league and Avengers. And I think it's due to that, that like, they're kind of fun, but that's what they just turn into is smash fest. Where, you mean the comics, right? You're not a fan of the comics so much? Or? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just like, I, I personally, it's kind of like, you know, you, you get those ones. It's like, I'm not saying they're bad, but you kind of go, well, I'd rather just see Batman kind of do his thing. And then have Superman and Wonder Woman appear here and there and so on. So I feel like I'm kind of like backpedaling. I'm like, well, they should make more of these. But really, it is nice when there are by themselves. I, I'm more just talking about when they first did the Avengers. I thought that they could have started off with just a couple of Avengers movies and then split the go the other direction. But I... I guess for the fans or for the people that didn't expect them to all come together, it works better that way. For people that already know that they're all together, mm-hmm. it's I guess. Uh, well, I will say that I am kind of curious to know because originally, before uh, DC went with the route they're going, 
they were going to do uh, the uh, Justice League movie where they're all there together. It was directed by uh, George Miller. Mm-hmm. And then they each get their own little spinoff movie, which sounded interesting to me because what they – the more I hear about that movie, I just want I wish they make a comic of it so I know what it was. Because the, the cast, what they had, it was uh, Captain America, not Captain, <laughs> Captain America, um, <laughs> The Crow, uh, Preacher, Spawn. and Scotland. Um, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Hellboy. This is, this is the story you would have got in fourth grade from some other kid pre internet, and you would have believed it too. You would have been like, really? They're fucking this? Yeah, dude, I fucking. I saw my uncle's like he like works for Universal. <laughs> I thought it was made by Warner Brothers. Well, Warner Brothers, well, Universal just got bought by Warner Brothers. What well, Warner Brothers got bought by Universal? Yeah. I, and I, I also I thought you you said your dad was a janitor at Universal Studios. Well, yeah, but that's like an inside job to like the movies. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so as my uncle George Carlin was telling me at Thanksgiving, so. <laughs> you know. Also, when, when, you know, kind of like it was the same Thanksgiving where Dio came to my house and pulled me out of the audience. <laughs> he does it every year. It's his thing. You know, it's a family get together kind of thing. <laughs> there would be that kid that would just tell you those, like, it would range from just like stupid movie rumor shit to uh, literally celebrities entering his house. Yeah. But um, no, the George Miller one, they were saying, like, uh, it was Batman, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Flash. And then, I don't know if it was. Martian Manhunter and Cyborg, maybe one or the other. But then they also had um, Booster Gold and then Blue Beetle on the team. And that they, would, and then they, the, they were probably like R2 D2 and C3PO, if I had to guess. They, I had to guess, yeah, I would guess that too. And apparently, the way they were going to go about it, because they actually had him on like an episode of Fat Man on Batman, they played it before. Um, just it was from an older interview. Uh, the guy, uh, I think Adam Brody was going to play Flash, and he said that he was playing Barry Allen Flash. Wally West was there. He wasn't the main character, but he was there. And the Flash was almost the main character of it, and he was going to die at the end of it, and they are going to pass it on to Mandel Wally. to the next guy. And that just seems like a really interesting way to go about it. Yeah, like that's a, that's a, it was a neat story on how they were going to go with that one. And hopefully someday somebody will make a comic out of it, because that's kind of the nice thing about when you get these scripts that don't ever get made. Is generally somebody goes out there and makes a comic of it, and then it's like, oh, okay, now I know what it looks like. Well, that's just such an interesting thing to do, yeah, to me. I mean, a lot of people say that just seems like weird, but it seems like a really cool thing to do. Of all characters, make the Flash the main character of the whole movie. That's the last character you would expect. You think it'd be Superman, maybe Batman, you know, but make it the Flash, and then have him die at the end. Make how many movies do that? They kill off one of the main characters in like yeah. the first series, you know. Well, the one and thing then too have is like on Wally to be the next Flash. It's I think that's sort of the way to make the movie too, because we all know who Batman and Superman is. So don't make them the spotlight characters. Just make them the, almost like the supporting role, which I guess to some people might sound kind of like blasphemy, but I think that's the thing to do is have the story be carried by either a Green Lantern, a Flash, a Green Arrow, one of those characters, and Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are all there, but they aren't like stealing the spotlight the whole time, you know. I'd be cool with that if they did that with the Justice League movie, but I'll also say this. I mean, I'm being really biased here, but if they came out and said, okay, so uh, every DC movie, Batman's a star. If it's Aquaman, Batman's in it. He's just in a, he's just in a snorkel mask helping Aquaman out, or Aquaman's out there helping him out. I'm like, I'm okay with that. I, know. I mean, you, you can't ever go wrong with Batman. Batman's that one character that... He can literally just step in front of somebody else's like movie, like on the poster. It's like says Aquaman, and he's just on the cover, just Batman, really big, and then Aquaman's on the back, like peeking over, and <laughs> over his shoulder. Like I'm still here because <laughs> you see that all the time in the comic books. You'll be like, oh, it's a it's a Robin comic. But who the fuck's on the cover? Batman. <laughs> Is Robin even on the Sad cover? Boy. No, I don't think he's even on this cover. But what I think they should do with the TV shows, going back to that. Is what they, they they almost should use that Legends tomorrow and say don't make any more just like put all your side characters that you want to use in here and then have it cross with you know Arrow Flash and maybe even Supergirl Supergirl almost feels like the show that's going to put it just tad bit over the top over the edge too of how many shows you can have out there it, you know it, and it'd almost be nice just to really just use Arrow and Flash as your two main shows and then that Legend Tomorrow fits in where, like, you might see the characters appear first on Flash or Arrow. Maybe then they go over to that show and you see a little bit more of them there. But at least you know you've you got a Triforce of shows. You haven't, you know, once you go farther than that, it just becomes too much. 
I think that what they're trying to do with Supergirl is like Flash and Arrow. They're more of like if you know if you're a DC Comics fan, not if like oh I've seen Dark Knight. It's oh are you a DC Comics fan? Okay, here's Flash and Arrow. And then Legends of Tomorrow is like all the really obscure shit. Like if you really like DC stuff, like the Atom or Hawk and Dove or Hawk Hawkman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If not, I don't know if Hawk and Dove are in there, but I'm just saying those kind of like really obscure characters like that. I think that's what Legends of Tomorrow is. Where Supergirl is kind of like, well, we all know Superman. Everyone knows of Supergirl, and they're gonna use super. They're gonna use Supergirl as like a launch pad. For like probably other shows and other characters, I bet they're gonna have like probably. I can see them bringing in more bigger stuff in that. Well, it sounds like I haven't, I didn't watch it yet because once again, there's just too much stuff. It's like it's already hard enough to just keep up with Arrow and Flash, let alone if you want to watch anything else. But um, or actually, technically, the two I only the only two I've been able to keep up with is Gotham and Arrow. Like Flash kind of comes like I I catch up like slowly. It's like every couple weeks, like okay, a couple episodes in a row. There we go. Okay, I'm back up to speed. Mm-hmm. But um, the Supergirl no, one actually, because at first I was just kind of like, yeah, Supergirl, you know, that's cool. I mean, I, you know, that's like not a bad idea. But it sounds like it's actually even got like leads more into Superman like stuff. You know, even he's in it is silhouetted and kind of hidden. Jimmy Olsen sent it or sent in from Superman himself to watch over his cousin. So it's not one of those ones where they're gonna hide like this, like almost make it that Supergirl's the only one. There's never been a Superman. So I think that's kind of a neat concept. Which they made Jimmy Olsen like the most good looking black dude you've ever seen. I haven't watched the show, but I've seen like trailers. He's just, like this really good looking black guy. He's just, like, hey ladies, I'm Jimmy Olsen. I'm just a- like <laughs> I bet you didn't guess this, but I'm a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> what if they just gave him some like sloppy, like rag- like raggedy Andy wig to be wearing the whole <laughs> he time? Just be this guy, like this really good looking black guy, but then he's just got this like extremely red hair. Just be like, that's my natural hair color. When he has a flashback, he's just like, oh, I'm Jimmy Olsen! You know, the way you imagine him, just this really dopey guy. Like, I remember when I first started at the back of the planet, you know, jumps back to like, oh, golly! You know, just some white kid. Well, technically, Oh, those were the days. Malcolm X had red hair, so it's not saying that. There you go. So. Yeah. Malcolm That's X is say, Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> Malcolm X. Malcolm X did it. Yeah, say. can't go wrong there. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, no, that seems like one of those. Well, I'm surprised. At some point, there's going to be a point when they start minusing out like Irish characters in movies. There's going to be this revolt going on. Like, hey, you're taking away our right. When they remake Boondock Saints and it's like made with like uh, I don't know, like two French Asian guys, instead. two Asian guys. There's <laughs> <laughs> just going to be a revolt. Dude, it sounds like in the background you got fucking like an automatic card shuffler going on. There is construction oh. going on in my front of my building. Oh, that, that, that sounds like a weird analogy, but that's what it sounds like. It just sounds like something's flipping cards back and forth, but I guess it's a jackhammer. That makes sense, too. It's a jackhammer, yeah, or something like that. No, it's, just, it's just a neighbor. He's jerking off. He's, I, my, yeah, my, that's what Otis Prime sounds like when he jerks off. <laughs> With dubstep music playing in the background. It's like... <laughs> Remix! They must have an orgy going on. There's more of them. Oh, no. The, the, now the Decepticons have joined in. They're all jerking <laughs> off in unison. <laughs> That's what dubstep sounds like. It just sounds like a Transformer orgy to me. I love when I, I love just telling people that because everybody just bust up laughing. Like, they didn't, like, you didn't think that when you first heard that? <laughs> they all, they either bust up laughing or they just stare blankly at you. Like, you know, I noticed, like, some people be like, oh, yeah, it does sound kind of like that. Or, like, I mean, because I know you and me will say, like, really, like, vulgar shit to each other and not really think anything of it and just kind of chuckle about it but i remember one time i was talking about like gran torino to somebody and this is this is somebody this is a friend of mine I, he's not just some oh he's just a guy i work with he actually is a friend of mine but i don't really talk this way around him so much because i was just testing the waters one time we were talking about gran torino and I, just the terminology i used i was like yeah you know that whole movie was all pretty upbeat and pre- pre- almost kind of like a light like a light dramatic comedy up until you get to the last 10 minutes and suddenly you take a hard right turn into Rapeville. And then, like, he just kind of, like, was quiet for a minute. He's like, Rapeville. Hmm. It's just not. It's always funny when you, like, because I do that same thing, too, where, like, when there's, like, new people around, I'm like, I will test I will test the comedy level on them. And a lot of people just, you realize their threshold for comedy is so low that, yeah, you say something like that and they look at you and they're just like, wow, that's really extreme. Like, they almost don't even think it's funny. They're like, 
they look at you like something's fucked up or something like that. <laughs> like maybe he was beaten as a kid or dropped yeah. on his head. I don't know where he finds this funny. <laughs> and then sometimes you get like these group of people and you can like test comedy out on them. And then you'll see like a couple of them might want to try to laugh. But then they have that thing where they're like, well, I don't know. My, my friends are here. I don't want them thinking that I like too extreme comedy. I got to keep my conservative views in check. Isn't that one time you're like at a dinner party and you said something to the effect like, whose dick do I got to suck to get a job? Exactly. I, it was a dinner party with a bunch of <laughs> stupid fucks from that worked for Google stupid or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess you're not becoming a data inputter anytime soon. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. A after like too many th things going on with YouTube, I, by that point, I've realized that my job for Google has been buried deeply in their like black box. <laughs> I still imagine you. I don't know. Just, just you see, just the way you said, just a bunch of dumb books at Google who <laughs> couldn't even handle real comedy. Like, ah. I just realized one of the spots I sometimes work at, there is a uh, Google bus that kind of stops right like right by it. I should, I should let me just, when we were having all that trouble with uh, YouTube and like the copyright thing, I should have just gone up and like to grab one of them. Like, when's my copyright violation being taken down? Like, slap, what? Slap him across the face. <laughs> Tell me! Fix it! <laughs> you know, like bully him. <laughs> <laughs> he suddenly gets flashbacks back to like high school. Like, not again! <laughs> Where's my lunch money, bitch? Just smacks him across the face. No! I went to coding school to a great to escape this! <laughs> oh god, some guy who creates videos is now beating me up. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do that. I'm, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. But I was just kinda like I would be kinda like while I was setting up in the morning, I would but go like these fucks taking down my like, <laughs> no, it's like a like huge like company. They're part of it. They feel like that guy's the guy right there. It's got to be someone waiting for this bus. It's got to be one of them. I know it. You start shaking them down like, who do you know at Warner Brothers? Who do you know? <laughs> who talked to you in the last week? Tell me. Give me the information. <laughs> Try what are you, 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 were you texting them like something about topic. me on my phone? We. we were you texting them something about me? He says, no, I was on fucking Instagram. You come by, you capture him in a, in a like a canvas bag and drag him to like some underground section in San Francisco. Turn on one singular light. He's tied to a chair. <laughs> Just like, I know, you know, somebody in the last week emailed you from Warner Brothers. You're going to let you're going to tell me. Oh, I don't know anything. That's what you say now. But here's the thing. I'm not just here for the information. I'm here to get my torture on. <laughs> I'm here for the fun of it. This just helps me sleep at night. Because here's the thing. I kind of got a problem with Google on top of it. Yeah, I may put stuff on there. Who doesn't this day and age? We all got to kind of do it. But I'm looking at you. And I'm labeling you as Google. I know it's just a job. I know you probably wanted to work somewhere else. But guess what? Now, you're going to learn the true fate of Google. <laughs> Clint Eastwood's playing me for some reason. <laughs> Clint Eastwood is Ryan Dunnigan. <laughs> I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> I, I I just put that on a resume. Well, Clint Eastwood played me in a movie once. Oh, well, we got to hire this guy. Then. Holy crap. How many people could say Clint Eastwood played him? Well, not very many. He mostly just plays himself in movies. He actually did a well, character acting bit for this one. Yeah. <laughs> What if he just played him really just kind of like, oh, <laughs> <He's> really <laughs> like, oh, I'm Ryan Dunnigan. <laughs> It's like, uh, is that really how he acts in real life? No, Clint Eastwood just really want to get hates this kid. <laughs> Look at me, I got a Clint Eastwood shirt on. <laughs> I love torture. It starts head banging his head against the wall. <laughs> How's that? Where's my fucking Oscar? Well, can we go another? Can we go another take with that? No. <laughs> Clint Eastwood only does one to two takes. Which is true. They're like, okay, we're getting ready for the next shot. Okay, let me get in character. One, two, three. <laughs> you know, just does, like, doing the goofy walk, like flopping his arms around. Torching this guy at Google. He's like, you ever seen that scene? He's like, oh, Clint, you're doing the wrong one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> you ever seen that scene in the 007 movie where the guy's got his balls hanging down? Uh, yeah, I was in Casino Royale, the third one. Well, guess what? <laughs> Poor guy at Google's just being tortured to death. <laughs> In fact, this guy's yeah. like, you know, my only job at Google is, I, 
I dispose of papers that people don't want. I don't even touch a computer. One time I tried to check my email and I got beat to death there. Like they put a bunch of soap in their socks and just <laughs> tied me down to a bed and just beat the living shit out of me. No matter where I go, I just get beat. Just be like, it was high school, then it was college, then it was Google, and now I just got picked up on the street and the same fucking thing's happening. I just got the image. It's not a bunch. It's not a bunch of like bars of soap. They're a bunch of germaphobe te- techies. They just like have like small little jugs of like germex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sanitizer like on lanyards. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that'd be worse than soap right there. Yeah. You know, I uh, uh, yeah. I don't. I'm not trying to be one of those people like I hate all techies. But I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. I don't really care. Usually, I'll feel bad about making fun of a certain group, but I don't feel bad about techies. It's know? funny too. It's like, oh, uh, sure. Aren't, don't you use a computer to do all your? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Doesn't mean I like the people that use it. <laughs> <laughs> Make it. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie. If we wouldn't have techies, I wouldn't have my phone right here. We probably wouldn't have video games. We wouldn't have computers. But. My experience with meeting some of them, I'm sure I met some that were nice and didn't even know who they were. They probably kept it a secret. But the ones that are like very like, yes, I am attacking. <laughs> and they're very judgmental, very fuck- like they, everything you say, you're a fucking idiot kind of people. Yeah, I mean, not all the time. I mean, I've met some that were cool, but a good majority of the ones I have met, you know, since I lived here, I've been real just entitled dicks, you know. And they're I'm not like going to lie. Cynical re- robots. But- That's what I lots of times call some of them. Yeah, cynical robots. I'm not gonna lie. A, big, a little bit of it. This is this is totally one-sided, selfish reason. This is the only reason, but a totally one-sided, selfish reason. On OK Cupid, a techie girl never gets back to me. It could be like a 99% like match. We should we learn the same shit. Never gets back to me. So that, <laughs> as shitty, as one-sided, and as like judgmental as that seems. Yeah, that's a reason. Not the only reason, but definitely a reason. <laughs> uh, something about those kind of people. This is what I'll say, because here's the thing that makes a techie different from somebody like... Uh, technically, we're in, like, the artist category, and there was a time period where I didn't used to like that term too much, but then I've kind of come to accept it. I'm like, no, I guess that's technically the ca- the general section we're in. We're not, like, the fancy arty... We're not, like, artsy-fartsy, but we are... You didn't want to be considered that. That's yeah, what I you're think afraid of. Like, I just never wanted to be part of that, like, artsy-fartsy. Like, look at me and my paintings. <laughs> And, you know, that kind. But, you know, just the, the tech people sometimes just have that thing where they think they're just better than everybody else. Almost like a preppy person or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do. It's almost kind of like, it's almost like techs, techie people are almost like the new kind of jocks in a sense, it seems. Yeah, they, they almost have the, an attitude similar to that. That is very true. Now, I'm not saying that's all cases. Some of them are usually, some of them can be cool, but I mean, most of the ones I have met, I'm just being honest here, most of the ones I have met have been dicks. That's the case. Just, that's just the saying, case. you know. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes just much rare people. Well, speaking of the uh, OK Cupid thing, don't help either. But is the, is the, is the, uh, is the uh, uh, jackhammer really loud? Or can nah, you just it's, it's, it? it's like, you know, kind of background sounds, almost like oceanic waves, but with machine. Oceanic waves is, is that you put, you like tapes for it of like, <laughs> Crickets or like ocean so, or rain. Well, we got we got here. We have crickets. We have you know the nice summer breeze. We got some rain. No, no, no. give me the one with the jackhammer in the background. My family's a blue collar family. We don't want none of this cricket bullshit. We want jackhammers. Or give me the one where the diesel truck runs all night long. It's right next to uh, tenderloin at four o'clock in the morning. Bitch, what's my morning? <laughs> that one helps you go to sleep really well. I do keep a buck, come on. <laughs> well, speaking of techies and sort of like techies mix of art people and making stuff that might make you sort of angry but sort of happy all at the same time i got halo 5 okay how is that okay well here's the thing if you are an anti-social gamer this is the perfect one for you because it's a you know so far i've only played a handful of the chapters or whatnot you know it's, it's totally fun it's just like you know halo as you remember it they do a good job of kind of they got two different storylines going you got master chief which plays sort of like old school halo like one two and three and then you have the ODST guys, whatever, mixed with the Reach guys. I can't remember fucking the story, how that goes. But then you have those guys, and it plays sort of in the Halo 4 kind of feel with that, those enemies. But just, it's that thing when you're playing the whole time, you know, you just sit there and go, you know what would make this really fun? If somebody could play it with me. <laughs> like, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fun, but, you know, what makes Halo, what makes Halo kind of the legendary game it is, I think it was the co-op. And secondly, yeah. it was the multiplayer. And you can't do any of those except for online. 
which is fucking retarded. You can't, like, say if we had four people over the house, we couldn't play Halo multiplayer. That's stupid to me. Which, that's fucking dumb. This is kind of how it feels to me, though. It, that's almost like releasing the next Super Smash Brothers and saying you could only play it single player and online. Yeah. It, it's pretty yeah. much about that same category. And some people might go, well, that's two completely different genres. I'm like, yeah, but here's the thing. When you think multiplayer games, like, I'm going to have four people over at my house and we're going to, you know, play the top five games. I would say Halo and Smash Brothers is definitely going to be in that top five, no matter just about who you are. Those two are always kind of like the two go-to ones, and then you might go break down and go, okay, let's play some Dead or Alive or some Street Fighter or something, you know, like that. Mario Party, Mario Kart. But that's the only thing. It's like, for a solo player experience, it's cool. I mean, it's just as good as, you know, it's ever been. So if, if if you liked Halo and never liked playing with anybody else, it's perfect. I heard this game does a little bit of, like, the Metal Gear Solid 2 thing where you play as Chief for a little bit, and then you play as the new guy. It, well, it does, like, what Halo 2 does, where you switch back and forth. That's where it reminds me of even more. Okay. Except for the the upside, it's not like you're... Because the only thing about, like, 2 is, like, I, I just never liked playing as, like, the Orbiter guy. It was just, like, everybody looks the same. <laughs> it sounds like such a racist thing. Like, they all look the same. I can't tell who's who. <laughs> At least when you play as Chief, you know that, like, they're, them space marines are the good people, and you know them, you know, space terrorists are the bad people. So I'm shooting that. But when I'm playing as a bunch of, you know, rag-headed terrorist guys, I can't tell who's who. <laughs> well, yeah, that was kind of weird, because Halo is definitely kind of like space Republicans versus the space terrorists, so. Yeah. And then by Halo 4, they introduced, like, a new type of people. I can't remember what they're called. But I thought that was they're what like made Halo 3 kind of nice, is that you got a new alien race going on, and then you had all kinds of new weapons go along with them. So it felt like you had a little bit more of a new experience. And they kind of combine both those elements of kind of the aliens and then the new aliens in here. I don't know if they had a flood. I think the flood kind of just got taken care of, but... Didn't the flood die at the end of, like, 3 or something? I think so. Strange enough, the thing, I've played through all the Halos. I've watched all the cutscenes. The story has never stuck to me very well. It's more... It's a game I just kind of have a fun time playing. The story, it's one of those things where it's like... It has, like, a... Um, the story is very bare-bones... But they almost expect people to really look into the expanded mythology and expanded universe type stuff. And a friend of mine showed me somewhere in Halo 3, like, I don't know, you know, some, sometimes you come across some random, like, old computer console thing or something. And he showed me these old files on there. And it really, it was almost this textbook of just, like, story of, like, <laughs> story explaining that you know there's that little cube thing it was just like i am the i i do you uh, you know he was actually the bad guy the whole time at the end he's the final boss basically yeah it was supposed to be a diary by that guy in a log somewhere saying that he um and basically he just kind of like did this before did the whole like oh turn on the big bright light to kill off everything in the universe type thing so he uh he did and there's like a whole just a fucking textbook of that somewhere in the game he just went to some file and show, and I and I'm like, oh my god, you you really expect someone to read all this shit? And then like, um, it was in the middle of a mission too, you know. <laughs> so, and then like, I guess like some of the games, so I guess some of the comics and some of that stuff kind of fills in the blanks. But you know, well, it's like when I watched that Halo animated movie, that to me made a lot more sense. I'm like, oh, oh, so that's what's going on. Well, this makes way more sense. And a lot of people too, they're like, they're like, well, if you read the Reach book that game you'll be like oh those characters are so fucking awesome i'm like oh okay i just thought it was just for want to be master chief guys that's how i viewed it but you know in space everybody wants to be master chief i read the first like fall of reach um i didn't finish it but i, I read like the first like a uh, good chunk of it and uh it was kind of like they took a bunch of like children replaced them with clones and their families they all died and like you know basically just recruit these children train them from like you know since they're really young into being um spartans and I think my, I think, uh, I think, um, Ch- Chief's name was Joe or John. It's John, it was John, which I always thought was like, they should almost have kept Master Chief. They should have kept him sort of like, uh, I mean, they still do a pretty good job, but like, I like him like, he's like Judge Dredd. You don't ever see his face, but they should have just never gave him a name. He should have just always been known as Master Chief. Like, there was like, I want to say they described him as like brown, white, white with brown hair. That's how they described him. Yeah, and then the like, generic little... white man, number three. Yeah. And he has it then, like, basically he was, uh, and it goes into him and his unit. They team up and all that. And, like, I, I, I just, I fell, uh, I don't know. It was one of those things where I had a, I, I, it was for a book report back in high school. I was reading it. 
and I just it was taking me too long because the book was a little thicker than I thought. I didn't have enough time. I'm like, you know what? My teacher's not going to look this shit up, you know? So I made up the last half of it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, then they all, um, there's a big space battle. They beat the aliens. And they come across a thing called Halo at the end. Hey. All right, Ryan. Good, good report. All right. B. Awesome. <laughs> What they should really do is, if they ever do take off Master Chief's helmet, he should take it off, and he should just be the most weirdest looking guy ever. He pulls it off, and this huge, like, red afro pops out. He's got these eyes that are all, like, right next to each other and squinty, and he's got big, fat glasses on. <laughs> he still has that very deep, muscular voice, like, hello. <laughs> yeah, just this goofy-looking guy. He's got just, like, a partial beard where it's grown up on, like, one side, but for some reason never came in on the other. He's got, like, too many acne scars on one side of his face for, like, the beard really to come through. He's missing his eyebrows. Like, just really fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one of those, like, like rest his ears that's... where it's all, like, filled up, like, on one side, like the potato ear, whatever they call that. Cauliflower. Cauliflower, cauliflower ear. yeah. He's just, like, they just, like, okay, like, the, the PR person's like, all right, you know what? We're just going to put this back on, you know? This <laughs> is... But I'm receiving the medal for saving the world today. Yes, you are. And you are. But you're going to do it with this helmet but, but on. We, Don't worry about it. We want it. people to see you the way they they know you and want to remember you. Well, don't they want to know the face of the people? No, it's just the idea. You know, they're, they'll be fine with that. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, overall, the game itself is it's cool. It plays smooth, you know. Nothing to complain about there. But it is just that thing... And I, I heard that the, one of the Microsoft guys are like, somebody's like, well, you're going to put a patch in at some point and put co-op and multiplayer back in it? And the guy's like, nah, it sounds like work and shit. Well, think about it on Halo 6. Think about it. Someone said that in an interview? Yeah, probably not that douchey, but that's kind of how it, it, this, it that translates out. Well, the video game companies are at this point where they're just kind of like, fuck you, where else are you going to go? Well, this is the only thing that kind of scares me, though, is if they release Halo 5 and they just kind of go, like, suck it. What? What, you're not going to play Halo 5, huh? Like, because I almost felt like when I bought it brand new, it's, it's just like I had money. It's like, fuck it, I'll buy it, whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, I should almost buy this used just to prove a point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but whatever. Just because you can. <laughs> you're like, I could wait, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, it, just to, like, so the money doesn't go there. Because this is the thing that scares me. Is once they go, well, they accepted Halo 5. Why do we have to make Gears of War 4 co-op, you know? Fuck it. You know, Dom's dead. Like, who cares? Like, what's Marcus going to do? Get a new friend? <laughs> like, so that makes me kind of iffy there, too, where... Because once they do that, they can kind of pull that shit on other stuff. And then It one... just seems so stupid to me just to take away the option. Like, it does, like it's always been there. Why would you suddenly take it away? I know like, most of our most of our fan bases play online anyway. Like, I remember when it was like... Dom Mat I think it was Dom Matrick. It was right before Xbox One came out and they had all that and he was just doing a horrible PR for it. And someone said, like, yeah, we'll always be online. Always needs to be online. Well, what about people who uh can't who don't have online? Like, we got a system for them. It's called the Xbox 360. Yeah, it's like, well, here's the thing. I learned this the other day on the Xbox One to throw more shit in their like giant deep grave. When I was playing through Gears of War. My internet was turned off. Not that I knew. It just kind of just wasn't turned back on. When I got achievements, the, this message kept popping up. But it was really quick. It was like, Duh, you can get your achievement if you have Xbox Live on. And I was like, what the fuck is that? So by about the third time, I finally was able to read it because it came up so quickly. So all the achievements that I got, once I turned the internet back on, I didn't get them because I wasn't online. Fucking yeah. retarded. Like, that's, that, that system yeah. is one of those ones. If you didn't want it for pretty much Halo and Gears of War... I don't know why you would buy. I could not recommend that system to anybody except for that. Also, yes, once the game starts playing, it's great. You know, it plays totally fine. But just, there's all this little shit that they're just doing. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I can't they're get achievements good. when I'm offline. I don't think you could, I really don't think if you bought that system and you bought a bunch of games and you went out in the middle of the woods to go play it, well, you know, like in a cabin of electricity, but you didn't have internet, I don't think you could play half those games. I think half of them just wouldn't work. Well, I will say that uh, I think it's one of those things at first they worship the game has to be online at all times. And then once they realized what that was doing for them, oh, by the way, it has a connect built in. So that means this thing with a camera is on you at all times, you know? Yeah. And then. Which I don't think anybody uh, owns it with the connect except for people that bought it day one. <laughs> yeah, and eventually just took the connect off. Because um, nobody wanted the fucking connect. And. Uh, 
what was I saying? Oh right, yeah. So anyway, they they after that after that I think they're like fuck fuck fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, just do bare minimum. They probably went in their last minute cheat because it was all probably built around trying to be online at all times. And they probably had to backtrack and just kind of change a few things around just so, like, I mean, it still has to go online for a lot of updates, but just, like, so it has to play online. But still, you don't get a lot of the perks of being online. So they probably did a lot of, like, last minute switch or, switch around like that and probably just still, probably, obviously it shows. Well, I don't think you could play Halo 5 without being online, at least to get it updated. Uh, that's fucking stupid because Cameron told me he was like yeah when I first put it in like I didn't have the internet connected or whatever and it, it, it wouldn't let me go any it just stopped at a certain place and just said it needs this 10 gig you know install fuck you uh, if you don't go there which is just I, I, it's just one of those one and the thing too is like you get a game and it's just like well I guess I'll play this in 24 hours like they're, this, P, PS4 doesn't really do that does it no I mean I because I, I, I have internet now and I don't think PS4 has ever had any trouble with that no I mean like they'll have updates and stuff but I, I don't I think you can play all the games just from the disc, and you wouldn't need to, you'd be to install it, but you wouldn't need to have to do a fucking 10 gig, you know, update to play the game. Mm -hmm. Some of the games on Xbox, I don't even think they're on the disc. I think they're literally, like, license agreements, and you download it from the internet, because it takes so fucking long to install. I can possibly see that. I mean, yeah, that's because they, originally they were talking about, like, what you would do when you got the Xbox One is you bought the game... It would install on there, and I think it could, it could only you could only put the disc in, in it like two or three times before the disc was ultimately useless. They talked about that, and then they then they scrapped that once they heard of the outcry of it. Because once, like I remember once when they were talking about the Xbox One compared to PS4, there was so much negative outcry to the PS for the Xbox One when it was first coming out, and like just like fuck you, where are you gonna go? Like oh shit, you know? Oh yeah, Xbox I forgot we have competition. Like, they almost, ex- they, they literally it- thought that they had it, like, in the bag. Like, they were the only system out there that they could do mm-hmm. all this shit. And it still is one of those systems, you you just look at it, it's like, if they lost, hey, let's just say, like, Halo and Gears, for some reason, were able to, like, go away and, like, end up being on PS4, there was no way that they could sell that system anymore. Like, who the hell would want it? Yeah. I'm Except, for, I guess, like, total, like, American loyalists. Because there's people out there that get, like, all fucking racy about it. Like, I don't buy fucking jap systems i only get american it, well I'll, i will say that the ps4 is uh is doing pretty the ps4 as far as i know is doing pretty good but i want to say isn't it like still a lot of the bigger games american games well yeah like this day and age it's like there used to be a time period because i used to be like the other way racy i used to be like racy against my own people like like, well, you know, uh, an American system is what we call a PC. Like, what is Xbox fucking doing here? You know what I mean? They, they expect Japanese quality. I don't want none of this American crap coming here. Like, sir, you're in America. Yeah, I know, exactly. And I want my shit imported. <laughs> <laughs> the way God intended. <laughs> well, now, yeah, some people just do get really... I, I can see a bunch of frat boys getting like that. You only get an Xbox One to play Madden in, in like, Call of Duty. That's all you fucking... That's all that matters. It's American. And of course, like, American. Yeah, well, what else? That's the We don't want you in here, Frenchie. <laughs> Get your French ass games out of here. Have trouble like finishing a game, so you have to go to some third party to finish your war. I mean, game for you. <laughs> God damn. No, no. I don't know if that didn't happen. I think I heard something about Ubisoft had to call extra help in to finish one of the Assassin's Creed games or something. Oh, yeah, because it was like Ubisoft's just like, you know, the super French. Glitchy. They're so French that they put a second Ubisoft up, and it was in French Canada. <laughs> no Canada like French Canada. But, no, it is oh, that thing. Well, like, that the Xbox One, it, the weird thing about it for the, for the, you think the original Xbox. And technically, like, at the time period, I would never have admitted this, but it was sort of the superb system to the PS2 and GameCube as far as power and everything it could do. It came with a size, you know, barrier, but you know what I mean? Mm. Like, that system probably could handle more than anything else. You need six friends to carry it inside your room. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, so that was that one, in a sense, you could almost say won the first console war as far as specs go. I think mm-hmm. game-wise, I think GameCube still outbeat them, but just saying, just saying. You know, I'm not trying to start no blood feuds, just staying in the facts. And then, you know, 360 and PS3, once again, the PS3 is probably the stronger system. But I really like my 360 a lot, you know? I mean, it... I like the 360, yeah. You know, I, I think the controller's a little bit better. I mean, the D-pad's better on the PS3. But so, you know, overall, people would say something like, well, you know, since the, they got the Blu-ray disc over that, I don't know. Like, I never noticed, like, graphic-wise being, like, you know, there was nothing too much different. I still think games like Gears of War look the best. 
I mean, they release a bunch of great things on there, but you get to this Xbox One, it almost feels like a company jumping in. It's almost like if Apple jumped in and decided to make a system all of a sudden. It has that if feel Apple, to it, like literally somebody's first system. I feel like, I wonder how far away, because they talk about Apple doing its own system. They're like, we got Apple TV, you know, but then that, I think that fell through. Unless that's no, still people in the still ports. use the Apple TV, you know, because you get those Apple ends. Who like get real? Because those people are like the most like judgmental out of anybody else. That's like the worst of the worst text is somebody who's obsessed with Apple because then they then they're always so negative against everything else. I'll get back. I got some shit on Apple in a little bit, I think, but I think um, everybody does unless you're an Appleian or whatever the fuck you want. No, people. well, not really. Well, shit to talk. I saw that Steve Jobs movie, and I'll get to that in a little while. But um, but you just gave me this fucking look. <laughs> like what? Well, nowadays. Well, it, it looks like an interesting one. Here's the thing: as long as it was, there's Atari stuff in it, then I'm kind of interested. It's it doesn't, but it's, <laughs> it doesn't, it's actually they don't, they don't care about you and you know what you want to see. No, I'll say this: so we'll, we'll finish what we're saying about all this video game stuff, and we'll get to it. it it's it's a different movie. Let me, let me put it this way: I'll just I'll just say this, and I'll get back to what we're talking about. Um, I don't like Steve Jobs. I got an iPhone. I got an iPod. Um, I like the products, but I don't like the way they run them. Um, I'm not really a huge tech guy. I got problems with Apple, and I do not like Steve Jobs. I do not like Steve Jobs, but it was a good movie. I'll say that, but I'll, I'll get to that stuff in a sec. I'll get to that stuff in a second. We'll just finish up on this. Um, well, I think that Apple, they're talking about like – I'm not talking about, but I think they're. I think Apple TV was one of the things they're going to try to do, like more video games. I can only imagine it starting off as being kind of like just a very kind of like any, any. If Apple had a game system, I imagine it being very like um, gimmicky, very kind of like swipey and very kind of like motion control kind of stuff. Very almost kind of like an app. You know what I mean? I almost imagine like most of their games being very app oriented. Like they, they probably would get like major games eventually. But I'm having trouble imagining someone play like um, some kind of Call of Duty game with some weird, goofy-looking Apple controller. Well, it's like okay, they have. I think they have controllers for the Apple one because they have controllers also for the Amazon TV. You can get like the set for it's like 130 bucks. You get the controller and the TV and all that stuff. And I think what it is is they are more like app-oriented like games because you know you can buy all those controllers now for your phones. So they, all those ones that translate into it, you can play them on your TV. I mean, of course, you can got fucking Sonic the Hedgehog and all that stuff because, you know, you, you can never go anywhere without somebody having Sonic the Hedgehog on their device. They're, they're whoring out his little blue pussy. They're trying to, like, trying to, like, man, this shit worked in the 90s. <laughs> Let's make it work again. Yeah, Let's like, not. Fuck. Let's just keep throwing it out there. Maybe it will stick. I, I feel Sega runs, like, everything they're able to do is all because they've whored out Sonic to every place known to mankind. Like Sonic's just like they just like keep him like and he's just basically. <laughs> they probably go to China and those like off-brand systems that you know they make out there that are unlicensed. They're like, hey, we'll sell you Sonic. You can put him on your unlicensed system, whatever. <laughs> it's like uh, Yuji Naka. He like goes down to his basement, to, like bring out the gimp. They just have like fucking Sonic in a little fucking gimp outfit. I got a leash. Bring him out. Exactly. Mario's like he's yours for the next seven years. My like Mario just dropped. Mario just drops his suitcase, you know. <laughs> and that's pretty much how it goes. But so at some point they will. But I just I have a hard time seeing the, any of those things being competitive against you know real video game systems, and at least not for a while. Because I think it's gonna take a, it's gonna take some effort to you know if Apple's gonna do it, they're gonna have to go all the way. You know what I mean? They can't just like partially throw out a half ass you know, little system that's fun for, you know, like probably like, I always look at those, those ones, like, like you could probably sell a kid, like one of those Amazon TVs and be like, here you go, Billy, this is your system. You know, as long as they don't have friends that got PS4s and so on, he'll be fine. Yeah. I can see that. You know, they probably, I can see them trying to like, they're just not letting that the Apple TV die. They're just like gripping onto it, you know, but, um, I'll say, speaking of Apple and all that, so I saw that Steve Jobs movie. Okay, let's take a quick break right there. Before you go into that, I'm going to take a pee. We're going to take a quick break, but now a word from our buddies at Painted Black Comics. I'm Pete, that's Brian. Yeah. There's Lou. We are Painted Black Podcast. We are Painted Black Comics. If you could describe the show, what would you describe it? Horribly offensive. Balls to the walls. True, true. A good time. I don't know. Very all all professional. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be Bang surprised zoom. if fucking Barney heard some 
some screaming from next door. Right? Hey, yo, Fred, I got like, kicked out of the house. Uh, can I stay with you guys for a little bit? No, Barney. <laughs> We're not friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> you better go stay with the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> dum dum, you should have said yes to your wife. <laughs> can you imagine what Disney World would have been like had he lived longer? Uh, no Jews. That's <laughs> <laughs> the primary difference. Yeah. I feel like he funded the Nazis in some way. Like, I, don't, I can't prove it. The what? first fucking model of their helmet had ears on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the basket's here. It's coming over the hill. What the fuck's going on? Dosan sounds like a Renaissance painter. <laughs> he was a fifth ninja turtle. He wasn't right in the head. They didn't really bring him out too much. <laughs> I'd like to fight the foot. <laughs> That's probably why they had a little stupid ass toppings. Bubble like, gum. Fuck, who let those on to the pizza? I want to think, that? bug. Who, <laughs> who put Legos on this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you money for for sex? I would enjoy <laughs> making a transaction for a blowjob. Yeah. Uh, Can I get a receipt with that pussy? Oh yeah, I don't want to follow this. Do you wash those briefs with starch? <laughs> <laughs> Make that booty clap. Why don't you? <laughs> Let's hear uh, Randy Newman doing the song for Pompeii. <laughs> oh, he's on the spot. Whoa, did smoke <laughs> volcano? <laughs> Whoa, did <it's> smoke <laughs> the stupidest? <laughs> Okay, Steve Jobs movie. Yeah, so the main reason I wanted to go see it was it was directed by Danny Boyle, who's one of my favorite directors. So that was the main reason. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, I, I'll, I'll just say this to get this out of the way. Like Aaron Sorkin, he's a good writer, but he just primarily writes about a lot of shit I don't care about. Like, I don't, don't take this as like a, a slant against him. But like, you know, he wrote a movie about Facebook. I couldn't give two fucks about the legal battle between a bunch of Harvard kids over Facebook. The social network one? Yeah. and You know, strange uh, enough, I, that movie's actually a pretty good movie, though. It is a good movie. That's the thing. I don't really give... I'm just That's why I'm giving him credit, because I don't really give a fuck about the source material. But that was a good movie, and he wrote a good movie. David Fincher directed it. This one, I don't really give a fuck about Steve Jobs or, like, Apple. But it was, it was really well written, and he made me kind of interested about it. Like... Now, I don't know how accurate it is the real thing. Basically, it's almost kind of like what's interesting is uh, did you, I saw the Steve Jobs movie on like a, this movie Jobs. The on, uh, Ashton Netflix. Kutcher one? On uh, Netflix. Have you seen that one? No, I never I have. I kind of I, interested in it. It was funny. The guy who plays Steve Jobs in this new one, he literally just said like when I went to I didn't really know who Steve Jobs was. I mean, I heard that name, but it's somebody I didn't know anything about. I literally went to Ashton or I looked at Ashton Kutcher's one to figure out who that guy was. Mike, Michael Fassbender said that? Yeah, he said that in, like, an interview I read. Well, he did a really good job, but, um... But just sounds funny. He's like, who the fuck's a Steve Jobs guy? Like, he's like, I just do acting. I'm Michael Fassbender. I'm a super actor. I don't get involved in technology or anything else. I was Magneto, you know? But, Where's um, the Kutcher? I need the Kutcher to tell me more about this Jobs fella. Bring him to me! <laughs> he's just oh, sitting on this, like, intense. acting throne down below. Where the Magneto there's helmet. Scripts in, there's just all these scripts in front of him. That's like it. You're almost describing parts of the movie right there. <laughs> <laughs> there's like several parts of the movie. I don't know if Steve Jobs did this, but there's like several parts of the movie where he's just sitting on the floor with a bunch of paper laid out in front of him, like sitting like cross-legged with a glass of orange juice looking over it, you know? So that seems like a very Steve Jobsy kind of thing right there. But um, basically what the movie is, it's kind of, it's a little different. It's like... Um, it, it's, it takes place right at the um, Apple, uh, right at the Macintosh launch. Yeah, like, I, I know that one's like, what's like a 10-year period or something like that, that one goes through? Yeah, it's in 85, and they pretty much go, I, the first one's in 80, or is it 89? Is it like uh, 85? When, whenever that one launched. They Probably have that 85, weird, I think that's when I think, the it, was, I think it was 85. Because yeah. it skips the Apple II and all that stuff, right? It skips you up. It just opens up on 85. We kind of get a lot of like the, the history through just conversations. And then it jumps over to uh, when he was when he was in next and he was coming out with the black cube mm -hmm. back in like, I think, 89. That was or maybe 90. And then it jumps all the way up to 98 because it ends and, like doesn't the movie end where like he releases the iPod or something like that. Like that's almost where it ends at. 
No, he, he it, it implies he he talks about like his daughter has a tape deck and he says to her like I am tired of looking at that thing. I am very tired of looking at it. Eventually, I'm going to make something where it's just like a thousand songs in one. Okay, he's like, yeah, okay, go ahead. You know, so yeah, it's called a mini disc player, Dad. Fuck it, old man. Yeah, you remember those mini disc things? Like that's something nobody fucking talks yeah. about. <laughs> nobody talks about those things. Yeah, they're almost kind of like early like UMD kind of things. Yeah, it was it was the bridge between uh, like a tape and a CD into like an MP3 player because it just you could. St- buy like fucking big ass ones which is probably not that big nowadays but you could store like 10 15 albums on there on like a one disc and that blew your mind i remember when i had a p i'll get back to the movie in a second i remember when i, I mainly got a I, I got a psp used and i didn't want to spend the money on an ipod or anything at the time and then we we're just like oh my god i get i could fit like 25 albums on my on my uh, PSP. on my PSP this is amazing my PSP was basically my MP3 player for a while so just be having this big clunky thing in my pocket for a while but no it was a good day but anyway uh so basically and it's kind of like his interaction with the same people over the course of this time and the movie has no problem saying he was a fucking asshole like that's it, good, it, it, has, that's it has no pretty much what everything that like you read about him they always kind of talk about he was just kind of a untrustworthy like dick and even the movie jobs the movie jobs that one it, he was here's the thing about that movie it wasn't even that it wasn't that great it wasn't god awful but it wasn't that great it was kind of like the first two quarters of the movie or two the first uh two thirds of the movie you fucking hate him i did not like him at all mm-hmm. and then we suddenly jump like right when he gets back to apple right right when he gets back to apple at the end and it's just like, oh, time has made me a nicer man. I'm chill now. We don't see how he got there. We just see that he's like, oh, I just got nice over time. Take my word for it. You know? Which the funny thing about it, it's like he's this like hippie guy, but he's more just, he's like literally like a, an evil judgmental hippie like prick. Yeah. He's not like, you would think that being a hippie would make him this really like friendly guy, but for some reason, like it did not. Because I just remember it's like, what a lot of stories I've read, they come from all the Atari guys. And stuff so like, yeah, that guy just decided, like, fuck, I'm going to go to, like, India for two months. See you guys in a bit. Like, what the fuck is that? We're, like, working on video games and shit here. Mm-hmm. And so he does that and he comes back. On, or sort of like when they made Breakout, too. This is, like, I always feel like one of the most dick moves he does. And I wish they would show it in both those movies, but I heard that that's not. They show it in um, Jobs, if you're doing the thing. I, 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 do they do the thing, up. though, where, like, they're, like, um, Nolan Bushnell from Atari is like, yo, this is a good game that I think him and... um. So, Wozniak. Yeah, him and Wozniak, and I want to say almost somebody else was there, but like they made it like if you can get rid of like you know as many of the chips you can, I will give you a thousand dollars or something for each chip you remove out of that game or something even maybe more than that, just to make the cost cheaper for this unit. So Steve Jobs gets Wozniak to come in, and Wozniak removes like thirty five chips or something from the thing, but Steve Jobs kept all the money, and he did something like because America's Nolan for- Bush you now like it was like a couple of years later he was like. So, what did you do with all that breakout money? And Wozniak was like, what breakout money? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, if going off the movie, because I only saw it once, uh, like, he offered him, I think it was like $15,000 to fix it, and then he paid, like, Steve Jobs, like, 400 bucks, something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, Wozniak got paid, like, yeah, 500 bucks, or something. like, enough that he was like, oh, this is great. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, Wozniak, <laughs> good, good for you, yeah. Because, like, the only thing that you can, you can always give credit to Steve Jobs, like, this is what his talent sort of is. He's good at, like, getting things out there, obviously. And that's what both those movies acknowledge. They definitely acknowledge He's that, not like, really, like, a computer, like, you know, he's not, like, the best programmer or anything like that, but he's just, a like, good at spreading the word and making people buy his shit. And that's what this movie does. I'm talking about Steve Jobs' movie, not Jobs, Steve. Because I, I, I'll say this. This movie takes place, of course, just... It, these it, they're almost kind of like bottle films there's one or two parts they have flashbacks back to the garage or something but it's all mostly just or like a boardroom meeting I always picture the garage it's, just like fucking steve wozniak working and like steve jobs like his feet kicked up on the couch drinking a beer like with a whip master <laughs> master i say <laughs> make that apple what are we calling an apple i don't know this apple beer is pretty good right now like throws a beer bottle at wozniak's head <laughs> That's what Bob Dylan would have done. <laughs> so it's one of those things like um, he uh, th- this movie, I'll, I'll say that that movie was about his life. This movie is a, like Steve, the movie Jobs was about his life. 
Steve Jobs is more about just him right before they have a demonstration, right before they big, do a big demo re- revealing this new product. Mm-hmm. And it's over the course of three years. So it's the 80, so it's 85, the Mac, the black, the black cube, and then the new, like the 90, the 98 Mac, which was the clear see-through colorful Mac thing. So what so, I was thinking of those is like the school Macs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he, um, so that's where it all takes place. And basically it's him having the same interaction with people over the years. So his daughter, we see his progression with his daughter. And I don't know how accurate the movie is. His, uh, uh, his uh, reaction with, with Wozniak, with his PR person. And uh, then I guess one of the main programmers, like um, Andy Humberton or Humberton, something like that. And here, here's, here's a little thing. I got to get this part out of the way because if there's something that's going to turn you down from the movie, it's this. Well, yeah. But I'll say he does a good job. No, no, no. It's not the fact that it's a Steve Jobs movie. It's this. No, no, no. It's because it's uh, what's his face is in it. Seth Rogen. Because I remember I thought like, oh, it's like Steve Wozniak's the only guy I can have faith in. And they put the guy I have the least faith in. <laughs> He does a good job, I'll say. He doesn't really because the thing I think what you don't like about Seth Rogen is he's playing the funny guy. Well, I think he's it's when playing... Seth Rogen does the thing where he's like, "Look at me, I'm so funny, I'm so awesome." And I think if he if he's in somebody else's movie where somebody can write for him, that mostly always kind of fixes the the Seth Rogenness because somebody's not going to be like, "No, Seth, you can't be fucking the cool guy who gets everything. You got to here. This is what you really are. You're a fat slob. Get used to it." <laughs> Just say how you really feel, man. <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude, I, I thought we were here to party and fucking, you know, have a good time and laugh and make fucking money and shit. Like, no, that's what I'm here to do. You're here to fucking act. Get used to it. Just chucks the script in his hand and walks out the room. So I will say, I think if, if the movie's written like that and it's not written, because it's like, you know, he, it's like you look at there's like that Christmas movie coming out with Seth Rogen. It's just like, look at me. I'm so fucking awesome. I'm, I just I'm even movie. in the center of my poster or my fucking, you know, Giant cardboard stand up at the movie theater. I'm just calling what I'm going to call that movie. I'm going to call that movie Fuck Spencer because I saw the trailer. And I was like, this is everything Spencer hates. It's like, it literally is. Like, like I don't know. He's just, and I think it's just that I just can't take it the fact that he just writes them. It's, it's all his own movies. I will say, yeah, whenever he's in something else, kind of like you can even say, like, um, in Zach and Mary, like that movie, it's like, since it's written by Kevin Smith. It doesn't have that thing of, like, it's not like he's writing himself in there as, like, the coolest guy ever and so on. So I think that kind of fixes it. I'm trying to think of other movies that he's in that he didn't write himself or was not, like, a part of the team. And I can't think of very many, but. Well, I think a movie where, because just because he was a supporting character where it did work pretty good. Because he was he was still playing kind of, like, the cool, funny guy, but in a different way. Super bad. Yeah, that's one of the few ones where, like, because he doesn't, the, since he's maybe the side character, I think it sort of works a little bit better in that one. He. He's just playing a very over the top, like bad cop. That's all he's doing. Yeah, so that's like where, that's yeah. one of the ones where that's one of the few ones where he wrote where it's not written in like that. But continue on. But he, movie. but he does a good job with Wozniak. He uh, he plays Wozniak very kind of like, hey man, it's all about the heart. It's all about you know he he and he would he the, the I mean I I don't know a whole lot. I know some of the big stuff you hear about like the Atari stuff and how. Jobs was really good at art, mar- marketing, and advertising, and like what, and like Steve and Woz- Steve and uh, 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 Jobs and Wozniak really get into one point. And he says like, you know how many times a day I read S- Steve Jobs as a genius? You know how many times I read that? Too many because you never built anything. It was me, and it was this guy and that guy, and he always had this complaint. He was always arguing like, the Apple II is the only thing that up to this point that. Uh, that the the uh, Apple made good. That was the only thing that lasted. That was the only thing that actually made any money. Was that so? Before you go on your next product, I want you to say I want you to say something nice regarding the old team. You don't got to say list every name. Just acknowledge the Apple II team because you never did. You know. So in this movie, fully, and he says something kind of like. Like they have this big argument near the third. They have a big argument. Like in each one of them, it's just kind of like how has their relationship progressed since the last time they met at one of these shows, you know? Mm-hmm. And this one, the like each one, each each time they meet, they kind of have a big argument. But the third one, he says something to the effect of like, um, Steve Jobs says something kind of like, "Well, I was always the thinker. You're always the." Uh, 
I was always the thinker. You were always like the heart or something like that. And he says like, you know, you could be talented and be a decent person. It's not binary. He just walks out the room. So. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's the one thing. It's like Steve Wozniak's that guy who he's always just kind of shit on. I think they, they still haven't given him enough credit. Maybe this movie will finally be it because it seems like you got to kind of know a little bit of history to know that. I think the average Joe just thinks of Steve Jobs being this like fucking godsend. And this movie acknowledges him. He was a dick. Like, it makes him. I'll, I'll see this. Like it, it has a it has a way of making him. Like I, don't don't get me wrong. I still don't like Steve Jobs, mm-hmm. but it has a way of presenting him as a good movie villain, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it, it has a way of saying kind of like okay, he is a fucking dick, but he's really good at this thing. Yeah. And he... that's what this movie's about. And then as it goes on we see his relationship with his daughter progress. We see there's problems there, but we see his, it progress. And as the, when the last act, he's a little nicer. You see, he's a little bit more chill, but still has some of those dick qualities about him, which, you know, people change over time. And after you, you know, had several companies go after you got like, you know, after, I'm assuming after, you know, he got kicked out of Apple and then lost the black box thing. And then kind of came back. I would assume you would have some, hum, uh, hum, like, humility about that and you would probably change in some way which would be implies he does a little bit and then he kind of fixes things with his daughter by the end of the movie even though you see there's some drama there but i'm gonna but you know i'm not gonna lie it does make him still have to be kind of a dick but it does it just shows okay yeah you're a dick but you're really good at this thing now out of the two movies because this is technically actually the third of the steve job movies if you count that documentary one which one do you think is the best out of the two Oh, this one is so much better than the, the, the Jobs. This is actually, look, Jobs was okay. Steve Jobs is a good movie. Huh. It's, it's it, like, uh, the reason I say that is because, I mean, I'm going to give the movie credit just for making, I mean, I'm not sure if I'd go out and buy this movie, but it's something where, like, I do not give a fuck about the subject matter. And it is about, it is strictly people walking back and forth, long shots of people having conversations about kind of like how this product will run, talk about the specs, and then bring in personal shit with it. And that does not sound appealing, but the fact it was Danny Boyle, and then I heard other people say it was really good. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And it was, if you can make that interesting, then I'm going to say you made a good movie. Yeah, well, like, I assume that one would actually be a pretty good one. I will say, like, probably if there's one thing stopping me, it was the Seth Rogen biased. Like, because you see that, and you're just like, God, movie hog Seth Rogen finds a way into another film. Even though he looks like Seth Rogen, he sounds like Seth Rogen, I wasn't really thinking of him so much as Seth Rogen, because he was, he was playing a very, he is, I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about Steve Jobs, I just know, or like, or Wozniak, I just know the bare minimums. He was playing it different. He was kind of hunched over a lot. He was kind of like twiddling his thumbs, hands together, kind of like hunched, kind of like having trouble making eye contact at some moments, as well as being kind of like making like like I don't know. He just he was just a very different kind of character. You just don't see Seth Rogen play. I will say I don't want to keep on going back to Seth Rogen because I mean I'm I'm not I'll be honest. I like Seth Rogen. Mm-hmm. I don't I'm not like in love with I'm not in love with his work or anything. I'm it's not like he automatically sells a movie to him, but I like him. I think he does. He's good at what he does. Um, I will say even though a lot of people hate this movie, you might like this because it's way different for him. Check out Observe and Report because that's a movie where he's almost playing like a psychopath rather than like i'm the funniest guy in the room i mean it's still a dark comedy but it's like he's playing someone who's mentally unstable huh yeah you you, you mentioned that one before and that one sounded like interesting and different enough i don't know it's just still it just takes a lot of effort for me to like have to put on a movie it's got to have a lot of elements going for it that i mm-hmm. will just have to accept it you know okay he's there don't make eye contact with him but he's there <laughs> i guess i guess some two things you could say you could use for this movie is probably um Two selling points, Danny Boyle, Magneto. Yeah. Oh, I like Michael Fassbender and stuff. It's strange enough, I will say this, I'm not really like the biggest Danny Boyle fan. I know that like he's a director that a lot of people like a lot. Like It's like, I enjoyed 28 Days Later, but that's uh, I really never have jumped out to any of his other movies. Like, I'm trying to think of another one that was like... Slumdog Millionaire is really good. I know that there's a lot of hype around that movie. Yeah, but it was a really I, I never movie. saw that one. It just It just didn't um, look like a movie that interested me. There's the one, it's like 128 days, or 128 hours, 128 days, guys fucking out there. <laughs> There's the that sequel. one, it just sounds like, I feel like in the description of the movie, it's like, uh, you kind of told me everything I mean, that happens in it. He, he, you know, gets stuck, cuts his arm off, 
and then makes it out of there. I didn't really see that one. It just it just sounds like I felt like I like in my mind I just pictured the entire movie. I don't I don't want to sound like a dick, but like maybe if I didn't know that was going to happen, he had to cut his arm off and all that stuff, and it wasn't given away like that, I'd be like, oh okay, let's just say like the guy was out for a hike. Okay, there we go. I, I like hikes. Well, the movie the movie does a, I guess it's kind of like banking on because that was a story that that it had that was based on a true story. So. Going in, knowing it's about that guy, I'm like, okay, he's just gonna get his arm cut off. The trailer doesn't show, like, fuck, fuck, like cutting through his arm. Well, it, it literally, it, it, but if you kind of hear enough chatter about it, it's gonna come up that way. And I remember, I think I was the one who spoiled it for you. Yeah, it's what the guy who cuts his arm off. Like, I didn't know that was gonna fucking happen. Like, you didn't hear about the story? No. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's kind of like there's that movie coming out, it's the 33 with like Antonio Banderas and so on. And it's about those miners down in Chile. That. And it's like, it's probably you know probably be a good movie, but I'm like I already know the whole story to it. It's not it, that'd be a perfect movie if you'd never heard about that. I bet you'd be a fantastic film because of that. Like you did not know what was going to happen, but when you kind of already know it all, I, don't, you know, I mean it's cool that those guys are going to movie made, but I'm, I'm not used to saying that against there. But you just feel like well I kind of already know what's going to happen. You know I mean obviously you didn't see it, but it's not as interesting as kind of going to a movie not knowing what's going to happen. I'd say probably, I don't want to, I mean, it's probably, if you say your favorite Danny Boyle movie, it's probably one of two movies. It's probably Train Spotting or 28 Days Later. And I feel bad saying this because it's on Netflix and I want to watch it. I just haven't got around to it. Um, Train Spotting is like the movie I haven't seen. I know that's like his like Pulp Fiction, but I, I need to see Train Spotting. Well, yeah, because and- Train Spotting is probably, you know, you got fucking Obi Wan Kenobi doing heroin. Like, who doesn't want to see yeah. that movie? I'm talking about Iggy Pop, right? Yeah. It, that, that's like what those movies like that one's just it's like a movie you kind of kind of have to see it definitely i'm gonna yeah, i'm gonna it's definitely like best the first time around i remember like the second and third time i watched it i was like okay it's good but not as amazing as like i first thought it the first time but i just hear it's very heavy and i'm kind of like and i always and i just never watching it i'm, I'm like i'm in the mood for a heavy movie because i hear like some really heavy dark shit happens in it so well it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's like a mix it's it's very it's like a stylized 90s movie with comedy and dark elements all at the same time. Is it, would you say it's something, because I could watch Embruge. I, I will whenever. say, is it, it like an Embruge kind of It thing? is actually a very similar style of that. Maybe not nearly as that, funny then. as that, but there's still a lot of like dark comedy in it and then dark Cause, elements. Because I could be depressed and put on Embruge and still feel better. Like, at least I'm not Colin Farrell right here. You but, won't walk um, away from Trainspot. Trainspot is not like a depressing movie. I won't say there's dark. People always say it is. People say, people make it out to be like it's a Requiem for a Dream is what No, okay. Is. It is definitely not like that at all. It's, it's more like a less funny version of like SLC Punk. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm, I'll probably check that out tonight or tomorrow. Though. Yeah, I, I, um, I will say, yeah, I, I do not think. I mean, there's dark moments in it, but like things kind of like, but there's comedy throughout and so on. And yeah, it's. I mean, I think I got it in my drama section, and I think that's probably where it belongs more than anything else. But it does have a lot of comedy in it still. So I'll, I'll, and it's I'll say basically, like a Guy Ritchie movie. I'll say it's like, uh, for me, it's one of those things like, I want to see that one, but I guess with the combination of this, 28 Days Later, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, I'm one of the few people that likes the beach. I'm not in love with the movie, but I like it. Um, uh, and then Trance. Trance was good, but I had real mixed I had real mixed emotions by the end of it. I didn't really know how to feel by, about the movie by the time I got to the end of it. I, so. guess, it's about the I guess I haven't really seen that many Danny Boyle movies to really like... You know, I guess because a lot of his films, as I always said, they they just don't jump out at me as like, like oh I gotta go see that one. He's not like, you know, he's not Robert Rodriguez or Tarantino or Guy Ritchie or something like that. Which I just I, I just gave off like three action directors. Well, okay, I see why you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably within my. I'd say he's probably within my top ten. Like if he really? made a movie, I'm interested. I haven't. Yeah, he's probably within my top ten. Uh, maybe at least top 15, possibly. Um, he is like, uh, it, it, as far as modern filmmakers go, the only movies of his I have not seen is Train Spotting and 127 Hours. I've seen everything else by him and I liked what I've so- seen. Um, Trance, I, I, I liked it, but it was like one of those things where at the end of it, it has this whole, um, it's trying to, movies about hypnotism and there's some plot twists and turns here and there. And like at some point, there's like a certain character that you're supposed to empathize with. I'm like, I, after what this happened, after that happened, I don't know how I can empathize or sympathize with this character. So, um, but no, I mean, I still say check that movie out because it's interesting. Huh, interesting. Well, I'll, at some point, yeah. I'll watch some of those other ones. But, mm-hmm. well, it's good. Jobs movies because that one looks like it'd be probably a good film. 
like, I don't know if I'd go out and buy it, but it was definitely, it was, I mean, because sometimes, like, there's some movies, like, I, when I first saw Argo, I'm like, I liked it, but I don't know if I could watch it again. And I watched it several times after, and that's still a really good movie. I, I could actually see myself, and, like, buying it cheaply, I can see myself possibly owning Argo. Maybe this is the same thing, but it was a really good movie. It, I mean, it's probably not my favorite of the year or nothing, but it's definitely, um, it's, it was definitely really good. It's pretending getting pretty darn close to the end of the year of all the films. You know, it trips me out that we're already almost done with 2015. I'm st- I just got used to writing 15 on, on the date. Yeah, so we're getting to the point where we're almost going to do our countdown of all the best movies of the year. And there's really only probably about maybe three more candidates coming up for best movies of the we year. Got, got we 007, got 007, um, Star Wars, and Tarantino. Yeah, there might be another one in there we forgot about, but I'm pretty sure it's just those three. Those are the three main ones. Yeah, they, there probably is something else that we're drawing a blank on, but... Mm-hmm. I know. That yeah, that's about sort of kind of strange enough. There's actually not a whole lot of huge movies coming out around Christmas. I think because they're just like, well, we already got we got Star Wars. Those we got those three. We Where like a lot of times there's been you know just like big movie, big movie, big movie, big movie, like all around that same time. And you're like, oh, like crap. But now it's just like I feel. Go ahead. I was just gonna say now it's just like you got Star Wars and and then Tarantino's movie, which is like hidden. It's like almost like nobody even knows that's fucking coming out. I think because originally there that was going to be a February release and they kicked it up to, to Christmas. And then like, you know, I mean, I want to say that like there's a bunch of movies. I, well, I, they are coming out with the Peanuts Gallery movie, but they're coming out with it on the same day as fucking 007, which I mean. Which uh, sometimes there's always that kind of point where it's like, you know, that you know what would have been perfect if you would have released it last Friday when nothing else came out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, like don't I mean it's like I mean I guess somebody's got to go up against the big movies. There's there's kind of like that slot's got to be filled by, you know, and it's probably just that happens to be what you get. And maybe since it's you know okay, 007 is like an adult movie. Peanuts can be kind of like a kids movie, even though I feel like that movie's made more for like adults. I'm looking forward to that. I can honestly, I, I like always the like animation. The Peanuts That's the one thing that looks really neat in it. And I like uh, Peanuts anyways, but I think the animation just looks really cool. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it doesn't look like they're trying to like overly moder- modernize it or try and do like some like it doesn't look like they're trying to smurf it or nothing, you know? No, well, the thing about the animation thing that's really neat is it makes it look like it's kind of like old, like cheap animation like they would have done back in the day for television. And it kind of keeps that sort of claymation look to it. Well, yeah, well, they, they have some shadowing to it. I think that's what gives the claymation mm-hmm. look. But what I like about yeah. it is just like. It, they're not it's not full animation it's totally tv like partial animation like they go to move and just like boop 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 and it's up there you know it's like i like that i like when the animation doesn't have to look you know smooth and good and everything like that it gives, gives me more, it gives, it's more it's it's more we're, that, we're that much closer yeah exactly it's like spunkles the rabbit animation it's like there we go i'm glad somebody else is using that style again spunkles the movie coming in 2018 <laughs> no but uh i was gonna say like i i the, they do seem to be just kind of coming out with a lot of... Uh, before, they would have like a lot of movies coming out. Well, actually, wait. Where's it going? With it? No, I'd actually say they'd always kind of have one or two big Christmas movies. And then there'd just be like... They'd overload it with a bunch of other movies, thinking people would all want to go see these movies, but they don't. Because I remember like Christmas, like two or two years ago, maybe three years ago, they had like... The movies like last year even. They had like... All right, they had 47 Ronin, Les Miserables... Uh, Django, and Hobbit. was it was Hobbit? Well, no, no, Hobbit's always been November, hasn't it? Well, it mostly comes out like you very. I think it comes out early December, so it's still Christmas. No, I'm literally talking about like right at Christmas. Oh, okay, like I, like I still Christmas feel like that, that. I remember because that influenced it a lot, anyways, though, because there when we went to go see Django, there was a lot of people still seeing Hobbit at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to say that though, there's always been kind of like really around Christmas season. There's always been like two or three movies and then that, that have been pretty big and then they'll always have a bunch of others just trying to piggyback on it and this seems to be sort of the same thing only it's probably more like okay you got even though it's more november you got you got 007 star wars and then the third person and the third one in line would be like tarantino's uh, uh hateful eight yeah which you know the upside is that like you can kind of you'll see 007 in november technically next week this week, actually, um, I mean, they're all, they're all coming out on different. They're all coming out on different weekends. So yeah, they're, so they're nicely like, spaced, which is good. You know, then, then mm-hmm. Star Wars is smart because they're doing it like the start of Christmas vacation instead. So it gives you 
two weeks to go and see it if you have that like school thing going on. And that, which I don't like it when they have movies released literally on Christmas because then I have to explain to my family. Well, you see, I really got to go see this movie so I can talk about it with Spencer on the podcast. <laughs> you know? I know, it's like I can't hang out because Tarantino. I felt horrible because when we went to go see Django, a I feel bad for the people working there on Christmas. I feel bad about them, even though I was there to see the movie. But um, we went to go see it because the plan was to just do it right after right after we were done with the movie, do knock out a podcast real quick and then go back to Christmas. But then, um, w- but then like um, I had to get back like oh, no, no, we'll just do it tomorrow or something. Or you had car trouble, I think that's what happened. And then when I get home, like they apparently were waiting before to open presents for me to get back. Like, are you fucking serious? You guys could have continued. I just felt absolutely horrible. So. And to this year, I mean, I might have to just do it the day after Christmas this year because I just felt so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weird thing, too, is, like, I my family was, like, always went to, to the movies on Christmas. And, you know, 15 years ago, nobody fucking did that. No one was there. It was, like, the best day to go to the theater because it was, like, you went there. And for some reason, they were open, but there was, you know, like... You know, there's like the you know the lonely man with like his six pack of beer. He's got stuffed in his sweatpants, like going in there. And there was the people <laughs> that hated Christmas that were in there. It was like that. That was the people that went generally. And then a couple other families. The Jewish family and the Chinese family. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like the people you're in there. And then all of a sudden, only in about the last maybe ten years or so, I think sort of due to when they started pushing like really big films to come out around that time. It became this huge thing to go to the movies on Christmas Day, which never was like that before. Because I don't think they even really released movies on Christmas Day. Because the ones you went and saw were already out for the last week or so. Mm-hmm. It was kind of considered like a day. I was like, well, the theater's open if you get bored at home and you hate your family. And, you know, fucking once, like, the uncle's been drinking since 8 in the morning and now he's starting to fight. Go to the theater to kind of get away from it all. <laughs> The racist uncle that nobody really likes. And then nowadays just it's just it's so, and like instigate shit. Yeah, exactly. And nowadays it's just so crowded. It's, it's almost a horrible day. I hate going on Christmas actually nowadays. It's just yeah. so filled with fuckers and so on that you just – you're like, remember when this was a great day to come to the theater? And like someone else was like, oh, I remember that day because I fucking hate Christmas and it's the one place I used to be able to escape and now I can't. Now I have to come here and see all these people. It's like, well, why don't you stay at home? Because I hate home. I hate home and I hate Christmas. <laughs> but I like the movie theater. It's the only place I go left. So, you know, that's about it. You get stuck with them. It's like, oh, okay, you know. And then they release so movies. Like, danger field. But Tar- Tarantino, you know, I got I got to see Tarantino day one, you know. Tarantino's like, no, I just really want the people who work at the movie theaters to work on Christmas. I just really want that. I want someone's life to be fucked up for my movie. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm not a religious person, but I believe in, like, you know, I mean, maybe just because it's built into me since I was born, but I just, I uh, I don't like it when co- companies are open for Christmas. I mean, okay, the police station or whatever, yeah. yeah something, but, a gas station, <laughs> some, well, nowadays you could almost close a gas station, sort of, because it's kind of like, what, you don't get a fucking card? Like, what are you, like, this day and age, it's seriously? Or you don't, there's no ATM that right in front of it that you could use real quick, but it's when I see, you know, like, um, just multiple businesses, when they stay open, I, 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 I mean, I understand why a movie theater would be open during Christmas, but still, it just seems so fucking shitty to the employees. You know what I mean? Even if it's, even if you're not religious, it's kind of like, hey, holiday, get the day off. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I remember that point where he was like, why the hell are all these places closed? It's like it's just a fucking holiday. What's the p- purpose? But then you kind of go, you know what? Those people look for those extra bonus eight days off a year, so might as well give it to them. Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. So, I mean, you know, I mean, some things I understand, but other things, it's just kind of like. You know, do people really need McDonald's on fucking Christmas? Exactly. Like, they could kill themselves tomorrow. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the same with some other businesses, too. It's just like... Maybe you'll be lucky. Maybe Santa Claus will leave you a shotgun. Yeah. You don't have to go to McDonald's the next day. Yeah, maybe you, you, you don't have to have the slow suicide. You can, you know, you can just do it right now and get it over with and let everybody else live their lives peacefully. But, yeah, yeah, you know? Fuck. But still, Tarantino, he's making us go, and, you know, he's cracking that whip and telling us to go there just because he knows. He knows we will. The thing is, I know it's not going to have a happy ending like Django Unchained, so. <laughs> but, well, whatever. At least we got things to look forward to. That's the nice part about life. It's at least there will always be some movie that's worth going to see. Mm-hmm. But that's probably a good place to wrap it all up. You know, good old what we're going to do in the next two months of movie watching. But till then, go to oldmanorange.com to see more comics, movies, animations, and more. Till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Donegan. And we will see you some other time.
Later, folks. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.